each room. So again, we'll have safe and happy deployments using automation in this room, probably getting started in about like three minutes. So how are you guys doing today? Good? Everybody awake? Yeah. Everybody got enough food? Yeah. Steve's challenge. How many of you have been to a WordCamp before? Okay. How many have you been have been to this WordCamp? All right. So we definitely have some new people. I'll give everybody else a couple more minutes just to get in here. A uh, quick poll, though. How many people know what deploy means? Awesome. You're my audience. OK, this is great. How many people don't know or want me to do a quick primer on what deploying is? OK, so deploying just means getting your files or your code changes out to a server. That's what I mean when I say deploy. Cool? Probably start right. Yeah. yeah. You want to shut the door? Um. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and get started in here. Um. So first of all, like, let's give a warm welcome to Aaron. He. Aaron is the director of web engineering at Zeek. Uh, he builds publishing solutions and architects robust deployment and delivery processes. So super smart. Um, but today he'll be speaking on a safe and happy deployment using automation. So let's give another warm welcome to Aaron. Thank you, Tish. Has anybody ever deployed code? And, and, you, and you've gone through it, and it's been maybe a slow, laborious process. Maybe you've forgotten the steps to deploy the project if you work on multiple projects. Uh, maybe if you work on a team, you're wondering who deployed the code last. Uh, maybe you wonder what code was deployed last. Um, and you're wondering what exactly, uh, what code is live, what what are the build steps? Maybe you have multiple build steps for each project. Maybe they're different for each project. Or maybe you actually uh, crashed the site when you pushed up files. Has anybody done that? Or maybe that's just me. Maybe it's just me. It's just me. So if you do that, how do you fix it in less than a minute? Because when that happens, you're jittering. You're like, ah, uh, i got to fix it. You know, 5,000 people are looking at the site. <clears throat> well, definitely. This is not the fastest way. This is, this is slow. Transmit, uh, FTP, that's, that's going to take you a while. Uh, also, SSHing in, you know, trying to edit the files live, also not a great uh, uh, key for uh, not a disaster. This is, this is what I'm talking about, having a one-button system where you can deploy and you can revert. Everything is automated. So first, so that's, that's why we're doing this. That's why we're having this talk. Um, have a system, and it doesn't have to be my system. My system could be an inspiration for you. you can, I'm actually going to show you uh, some of the tools that we use. But just have a system. These are the things that I've identified about the system that we use and the things that I strive for in building the system that we use. Have a system that's consistent. You want a system, especially if you work on a team, that everyone can deploy. Everyone knows how it works because it works the same for every single project. Um, you, want, you want it to work the same regardless of who is using it. So whether I'm using it or Steve's using it or Jacob, uh, one, another one of our developers is using it, everybody's doing the same thing the same way because they're not actually doing much of the deploy. They're just pressing the button. Um, and you want the, the deployment process. Who, who has worked, had to work with multiple hosts? You know what I'm saying? You're not just working with one host 
you have multiple projects and they all live on different hosts because that ultimately is typically up to the client. The client is the one paying the bills for the hosting most of the time in most setups. Um, so the client picks WP Engine or Liquid Web or Pagely or uh, Pressable. So your deployment system can't be tied to any one of those hosts. It has to be independent completely of the host. You need a very transparent system. This is very, very, very helpful. You need an audit trail. You need a way to see who pushed code, when did they push it, what did they push, when it was deployed, etc. And you can see what's currently live. You need a system that's fast. SFTP is very slow. It's very slow because files go up one by one. And if you're pushing up 2,000 files, it's going to break the site. It's going to break the site because the first file that gets pushed has code changes or is calling a function that is in the last file. So you can't be sure that the, the site is not going to come down. So you want a very fast system. You also want an intelligent system, something like rsync or git, and we'll talk about that in a second. Because rsync and git are very intelligent. They only send the files that have changed since the last deployment. So you're not resending every single file every single time. I've done this, don't laugh. It's, I've, I've, I've had a two hour downtime for a site because we pushed all the dependencies every single time. It was extremely, extremely frustrating. Uh, you, want a, you want a system, like I've, I've kind of alluded to, you want a system that's very simple. Deploy should mean hitting one button. Reverting should mean hitting one button. So everybody knows what to do. So if there is a problem, you just go into your deployment process and you hit the button and everything is back to normal and then you can figure out what happened. You can figure out why it broke, if it breaks. And lastly, you want a system that is automated. Everything has kind of been alluding to this, especially with the title of the talk, but you want a system that's automated. You want a system that has no user input or action required. You want all the steps automated, compiling, building, checking, deploying, testing, notifying the team. All of these things need to be automated. So I will demonstrate or I'll show an overview of our system. We'll go over this step by step. It looks a little bit complex. Um, it, it is complex, but you, you do the complexity now so that when you go to deploy, it's much simpler. So first of all, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get code onto the server. And in our case, we're using Git. You don't have to use Git, but I do recommend that you use a version control system. Uh, very, very important. So Git, I will not go into this deeply. Definitely check it out if you don't know what I'm talking about. Have your code in a version control system. That way, there is a, a process and there is a uh, way to commit your code in different, uh, different commits, different stages. So to manage all of our deploys, we use a system called Buddy. We used to use the system called DeployBot. Um, we have since moved on to Buddy, and I'll, I'll show you this in a second. I'll show you some of the, the interface here. Um, I really like Buddy. I considered when we were rebuilding our deployment system, I considered Jenkins. Uh, I looked at a few different options. Um, Buddy is what we, we, what we really were, were happy with. I really like the interface. Um, I like how much configuration, uh, how many options there are available. Uh, there's a lot of different tools that they, that they use. The, and their, their feedback is very, or their support is very good. So if you have feedback about a, a feature you'd like to see, uh, they've, they've been very, very supportive. Um, so this is a little bit about our system, or, or this, is, this is our current build process as it stands right now. And I actually just added the very top one, so a PHP syntax checker, because I thought, hey, it'd be kind of cool, like as I'm going to deploy, I don't accidentally goof up with something really simple, like I forget a semicolon, and uh, the site comes down. Um, so adding this in is very, very simple. I hit the little plus sign, and I can add in a PHP step. So this, each one of these is uh, essentially like a Docker container that spins up, and then it executes a command. So, and if it fails, the, the whole process stops, and it lets us know. So with the PHP syntax checker, it loads up the code, it scans the code, and there's, there's 
tools that people have written to do this stuff. So I'm just using the tool that somebody's built and a PHP Docker container and I run that. And then the next thing is a security checker. So there is a tool out there by Sensio Labs uh, that actually will check all your dependencies versions for vulnerabilities. So it's really, really helpful to see if any of the dependencies that we have uh, have, have reported uh, uh, vulnerabilities and that's a good alert to let us know, hey, we should update this so we don't have uh, insecure code out there. Um, we also, so this is just a zoomed in view of that, uh, we also can set up and build environmental variables. Anybody not know what env environmental variables are? Okay. Environmental variables are ways that we can alter the code base based on the environment it's in. So if I'm working on my local machine, I want to set, say, the Stripe key, right? So I've got a payment gateway. I don't actually want to accidentally charge a user on my local machine. That would, that would not be good, right? That would be bad. That would be bad, right? <laughs> I, I don't want to accidentally send a thousand emails to people via SendGrid because my, my uh, API key is hard coded in the code. Environmental keys are very, very important. So uh, the way that we manage environmental variables is through Buddy and we use a file, we use a package, uh, env.php is a package um, uh, and we can build the environmental variables on the fly and then place them uh, on the server every time. So the live server's got the right Stripe API key and I have the test API key. So it's very, very good so we don't accidentally get the wrong things happening uh, in our local, our test environments. Uh, we install dependencies and I'll talk a little bit more about this in a little bit, but we manage all of our dependencies through Composer um, and uh, NPM. So all of our PHP, compo uh, PHP dependencies and packages are all managed through Composer. So we don't have those in the repo. The plugins, the plugins directory, most of that is not in our repo. It's clutter, it's noise, it's stuff that we don't want just uh, clogging up our repository. We just want our core code. Because if we're bringing down a Kismet, for example, we don't want to store a copy of that in our repo. We just want the version that we want when we deploy. We don't want to have to manage uh, each individual file. So we, we install those dependencies. We compile assets. So we compile JavaScript, uh, uh, CSS or SAS, uh, do anything else on the front end. Um, so all this is happening automatically every time you deploy. So you don't have to do these things, make sure they're done, increment the CSS, and then commit that, and then hope that that gets up there. Uh, and then moving the files to the server. This is the whole point. This is the deploy part. So moving the files to the server. Uh, and you can see right there on the second to last line, Zeke Pusher. So that is a system that I built which actually m does uh, a couple of these bullet points and does the moving of the files to the server. And we also do visual regression testing, which is really, really, really cool because if we're pushing files out there and I'm refreshing the page, right, like I'm refreshing the home page to make sure it didn't break, um, that's good, but I'd rather have it automated. I'd rather have it so after it's done, then Buddy kicks off the visual regression testing system we use, and it checks not just the home page, but it checks the about page, it checks the post page, it checks things about all of those pages to make sure that I didn't just completely ruin the site. And then after everything, whether it's good or bad, we notify the team via Slack. And this is what actually deploying looks like. I click run now, and it starts that whole process. That's that one button uh, initiation that I'm talking about. And then as, it's, as it goes through, uh, you can see each step. So it's very transparent. You can see each step. You can, you can click for more details in each individual area. So you can see the top three, security checker, the ENV file, uh, and the, the moving the ENV to the Zeek pusher. Those are all completed. But I can go look at the logs to see what happened in that step. And, so, uh, and then in the Zeek pusher, the Zeek pusher is an SSH command. So Buddy SSHs, SSHs into our little uh, VPS box and it starts running a command with a git uh, hash. And then you can full screen it and you can look at what does that look like. So on the second line, 
I'm running the deploy script with this is the commit. So this is the commit we want to do. So whether or not that's the latest one or it's a reversion and we want to roll back, it doesn't matter. It's just here's the code base commit. And then it starts running through. And you can see this is where it's installing Composer. Uh, and then it's pushing to WP Engine via their Git push system. And then a little bit, just an audit trail. So I can go back and I can see for the Zeek BB demo, I can see these are, the, these are the last deployments that happened. And I can click into them and I can actually see all the logs about what happened in that step. So it's very transparent. Uh, and there's a lot of actions available, like I said. Uh, so if you can think of it, you can do it uh, pretty much. Um, and if you can't do it with one of their pre-built uh, uh, actions, you can, you can write your own Docker container and you can put it up and you can actually pull it in. So it's very helpful. And Buddy's a newer service. Um, and I've been in contact with him because while I, was, while I was evaluating whether or not this was the right system, I was asking some questions. I was kind of pushing pretty hard to see, you know, like, is this a system for us? So I've been in contact with him. And I actually reached out to him. And I asked him, I said, I'm going to be doing a talk at WordCamp Orange County. I said, do you want to offer some sort of discount? And they said, yes, absolutely. So they're going to do 25% off any plan. Um, if you sign up within the next 14 days, just tell them Orange County WordCamp. And there's a, like a little support like chat icon. Uh, so after you sign up, just say, hey, Orange County WordCamp, and they'll, they'll set your plan to 25% off. So. This talk is not sponsored or affiliated by Buddy in any way, even though it kind of sounds like it. Uh, I just want to put that out there. I really like the service. And things I'm passionate about, I like to you know, tell people about because I like to share things that are awesome. So uh, I really, really like it. It's a really, it's a really fluid interface, uh, which has not been my experience with like deployment managers and Jenkins and uh, other ones. Now, there are other ones out there, like Jenkins, DeployBot. So figure out which one works for you. But use something. Don't just use the command line and hope that you know, I'm pushing the same thing as um, uh, another person on my team. So that's the Zeek pusher. Uh, and so the, or I'm sorry, that's Buddy. Uh, next, Buddy kicks off. You saw that step with Zeek pusher. So it initiates to Zeek pusher. And we get to Zeek pusher. Now, what is this, right? This is kind of a black box. It's a VPS. So, it's, so in a nutshell, it builds and deploys files. Okay, It runs on a VPS, whether it be Linode or DigitalOcean. For us, it's running on DigitalOcean. But it's a, just a small box you set up. It can be whatever you want it to be. It's really just a collection of scripts. It's, it's a couple bash scripts that I've written. But it's an interface between the server and our code. And it's, it's an interface between like WP Engine or Liquid Web and our code. So it uses Git and rsync, and it, that is dependent on, that's kind of where it levels out based on the host that you have. Some hosts su support SSH access. Great, you could totally use rsync. Some don't, but have other options like Git push, like WP Engine. OK, that's also very good. Um, and how it breaks down is two repos on this Zeek pusher box for each project. So each, each project has a core uh, repository and a deploy repository. And why I had to do this was because I needed two different things. I had my code in GitHub, and that didn't have my dependencies. It didn't have plugins. It didn't have the vendor folder for PHP packages. Uh, it didn't have the compiled assets, because I wanted to keep those out. I didn't want to clutter the code base with all of that stuff, because that's not really what we're, we're tracking. So it doesn't have compiled assets. Like I said, it doesn't have dependencies. It mirrors the code base. It's directly connected to GitHub. Versus the deploy repo, it's not connected to GitHub at all. It's, it doesn't have a remote to GitHub. It mirrors the server. So you've got these two repos. This one mirrors the server. This one mirrors code base, or the code base. This one has the compiled assets. This one has the dependencies. This is where everything has already been built. And the way that it works is they're actually are synced across. So they're on the same box. They're sibling folders. And every time I push a deploy, it runs the deploy script. And the deploy script goes and it grabs whatever commit I want from, from that core repo. So the core repo is connected to GitHub. It grabs that commit. It sets that repo at that commit level. Then it runs. It actually deletes all of WP content in the deploy repo. 
Now, it's all tracked in Git, but it, de it deletes the whole directory because then it resets everything from the core repo with rsync. So it brings everything over fresh, and then it starts kicking off the build process. And it kicks off the build process with uh, Composer. So Composer is the dependency manager for PHP. Uh, it's very, 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 very helpful. If you haven't heard of this after this talk, go check it out. It's, it's how you can manage dependencies uh, with PHP. And there is a uh, website that's uh, uh, kind of a sister to Composer, which is Packagist. So people take the, it's just like the WordPress.org plugin repo, really. It's people that aren't in the WordPress space, but they're building PHP packages and they put them out there open source. And they're all connected to GitHub, but this is like the, the archive list of all of those packages where you can go to see them. And then you can bring them in just by typing in Composer require A7 autoload, which is a package that I built. So you can bring that into your package without have, or your project without having to copy files down or you know, un, un, uh, install things uh, manually. And you can set which version you want of it. So you can lock your project into a specific version and you don't accidentally get an update if you haven't tested it, which is dangerous because that can bring your site down. Uh, and then, so we, we talked about Packagist, and that's like the list of all the thousands and thousands of PHP open source packages you can use uh, for free. Now, if you don't, if say you build your own PHP, PHP packages for your own business or uh, for your team, but you don't want to open source it for whatever reason, there is, so what, what runs Packagist essentially is Satis, or the Satis is the private Packagist. So this is where you can actually set up your own private Packagist, which is what we do for some of our, our PHP packages that we just don't want to open source for whatever reason. Um, maybe it's proprietary to the client, whatever. Um, so we run this, and that way we can put our packages up, and they're available to just us. And then taking it a step further, so how you manage plugin dependencies or plugins as dependencies is through WordPress packages. And what this does is it, it mirrors the WordPress.org plugin repo, but it attaches a composer file to each of those plugins. So you can specify which plugins you want just in your composer file. So everything's being, basically, the composer file is a manifest then of which dependencies this project needs. And then taking it even one step further, I know, we're, we just keep getting more complex, um, Satis Press. So Satis Press is just like Satis with a private you know, uh, uh, listing of all the packages, but this is for plugins that are not on the WordPress repo. So if you have purchased a license for a plugin and you have it, you can set up your own Satis Press box and then you can receive, receive that plugin through there. So every single dependency we can manage in some way. And then, we want to do some front end building. So we did the composer, we did the back end dependencies, but we also have some front end building steps to do. We have, uh, uh, we have you know, SAS files, we have JavaScript files, those need to be compiled down for uh, you know, speed, optimization, uh, maybe you're using more advanced uh, JavaScript technologies where you can use requires or imports and you want all that to be compiled. This handles it. So uh, we, still use, and we used to use a, a system called Gulp. Uh, it's very handy, it's a task runner. Go check it out, I'm not really gonna talk much about it other than to say this is one of the um, build tools that we use. Uh, we are also using Webpack, uh, and I think we're moving more towards Webpack. Is that right, Jacob? Yes. Yes, I work with Jacob, awesome guy. Uh, yeah, Webpack is, is a really cool build tool. It's a lot more complex though. It takes a lot more to get up to speed with it, but it's very, very, very powerful. So that composer actually has hooks in it where you can run scripts at a certain point. So via the composer manifest file, we can actually say, okay, when you get to this point, run npm run build, and that actually goes and it executes uh, whatever front end build uh, tool that we need. So we've done all the building, we're, we're past that part. Again, I didn't do anything, I just hit a button. Um, so the Zeke Pusher has done all this, Composer has done all this, 
and we had moved over all those files and we, we went through that process I just described. Now we're about ready to push the files. What we do is we commit all those changes. Now we have everything in there. We have all the dependencies, we have all the assets, everything's in here. It's not connected to GitHub, remember, it's just on this box. Um, so this is all committed. And it's important because with WP Engine's git push or somebody else's git push, you need to be able to do a diff. And you need to be able to say, here's what it was in the past version. Uh, yeah, we deleted everything, but we brought it back because uh, Git is great about doing diffing. So even if you delete everything but bring most of it back, it's only gonna say, well, only things that have changed are you know, these four files or whatever. So we commit it, and then we push it to the server. And this push to server depends on the project. So we're either gonna do rsync, uh, which I said, like I said, is, is very cool uh, open source uh, shell utility tool, it's been around forever, uh, or we do a git push uh, to uh, uh, server depending on the host. And those are very, 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 very fast. They are seconds, they take seconds, not minutes, uh, because of that intelligent file diffing. You're only pushing the files that have changed, which is, which is awesome when you're installing a bunch of PHP dependencies, uh, that can get pretty massive and take a really, really long time. So now we have the files out to the server. So now we kick off the visual regression test. Uh, we use Ghost Inspector. I really like this tool. Sorry guys, I wasn't able to get you a discount. Um, not that they didn't offer it, I, I didn't have time to contact them, but um, I, I do like Ghost Inspector. We tried a bunch of different tools. Um, this one is really neat because of how easy it is to create tests. There's no coding involved. You install an extension in Chrome, you, you load up the site you wanna test, you hit start recording, and then you just like make assertions. You click around the page at different CSS elements and different divs and stuff, and it records those things, and then you can say, okay, I'm done, and then it ships it off to your, your suite, and then you have a, a visual regression test. It's, it takes less than a minute. What's up? So the question was, are there any tools that we can hook up into the, the process that do it when we push? Is that, okay, this. This has a web hook, so all I have to do is just send, uh, I just grab the URL, they have a really good API. You just grab the, the URL and I throw that into Buddy and then it kicks it off in my build process. Does that answer your question? Okay, so I really like this because it gives us confirmation. Now we have a dedicated QA person at Zeek which is awesome. I never worked at a place that had such a rigorous testing uh, uh, setup. Uh, it, it's really nice because as a developer, you kind of get a little lazy and you're like, you always follow the happy path. Does anybody know what I'm talking about with happy, happy path? <laughs> Not that happy path, I mean, no. Um, you always, you, you want your code to work. So you're testing how everything is supposed to work, right? You're not throwing garbage at the functions to see what happens when they get stuff they're not supposed to. Um, our QA tester, Katrina, is great. She definitely, she is able to see ways that we have blinded ourselves to. So having a QA person is fantastic. It does, this does not replace it. But it's a nice compliment. It's a really nice compliment because maybe she's busy in a meeting or whatever and we just have to push something. This gives us immediate feedback within a minute or two minutes uh, that all the things that we have asserted about the site are still true. So the, the home page is not a big giant white screen, you know, things like that. Uh, and then we notify the team. So we just hook in with, with Slack or whatever, hip chat, whatever you wanna do, we use Slack. Uh, and we just notify the team that, hey, something broke, uh, get on it, or oh, it's all fine. So that is Zeek, that is, that is our process, and the Zeek Pusher uh, is open source as of yesterday. Um, I am not trying to claim that this is like, you just, you just hit a button and then it's all set up for you. But it is open source, do with it what you will, maybe it's helpful for you, uh, feel free to open issues and uh, uh, contribute as well. I would love some help on this project. Um, I, I definitely have plans to make this a little bit more robust, but as, as it stands right now, it's more of an inspiration than, than you can just you know, take it off the shelf. Um, but you can see exactly what we've done. So uh, my name is Aaron Holbrook. Uh, I'm the director of web engineering at Zeek. And uh, yeah, questions? Yeah. Are you gonna make these slides available online? Sure. Sure. Yeah. So I have a question about the kind of middleman and the equivalent. Um, how do you specifically handle and make sure you like um, keep filing stuff locally that you don't trace to like a big server that doesn't matter to you? 
I'm sorry, can we get the microphone? Sorry, you, I, I, I don't think I could repeat everything you just said. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> um, it's, it's a so, beach ball for those of you watching on the video. <laughs> um, so uh, my question was, can you kind of elaborate on when um, like something like a Zeek pusher would be necessary as compared to like compiling everything locally, then pushing to staging, and then from staging to like a live server? Yes. OK, so everybody got that question? Um, I, I would say the Zeek pusher was necessary for us because we were not finding um, the tools like Buddy or DeployBot could fill that gap of the build step. So you could absolutely build it locally, but every single person on your team, if you have teams, uh, need, needs to follow those same exact steps. So that's where I was talking about having a system that's consistent, it's simple, it's, 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 there's no, it's all automated, right? Like, those build steps you're talking about on your local machine, that's not automated if you're having to manually do those. So with, with a system like Buddy, you can get most of the way there. The reason I built the Zeek Pusher is because the options offered by DeployBot, by Jenkins, by uh, Buddy didn't, didn't fulfill the git push to WP Engine and the rsync uh, to the servers. Now, Buddy has an rsync uh, uh, action but it, I needed to do certain things that they didn't really have available. Like, uh, so in the, um, so I'm gonna pull up. I'm gonna pull up the Zeek pusher just to show you. Okay, so the, uh, da, da, da. so this is the script. And this is where I rsync over the repo to the deploy repo, uh, and then the very last line. So I'm doing some things here where I exclude files, and really, really, really important. Same with the git push. You want to exclude uploads, oh my goodness, because I'm doing a delete if that file doesn't exist on the server, which is you need, if you're pushing uh, a change in your repo, and I'm removing a kismet, right? All of a sudden, a kismet doesn't exist in our deploy repo. It shouldn't exist on the server anymore. If you don't pass the delete flag, rsync will just say it's, it's more additive than it is uh, a syncing at that point. So it's gonna add any new files, but it's not gonna delete files that don't exist. So you need an exclusion uh, to make sure that you don't accidentally delete uh, all of your client's upload, uh, which would be very bad. So these, are the types of things that we exclude. Can everybody see that? Okay, so we're excluding things like uh, the ENV, WP content, in case somebody set the wrong directory. We don't want to delete all of WP content. Uh, we don't really want to send tests, uh, things like that. Um, and we don't want to necessarily delete, so these are vendor specific, so WP, WP Engine has a couple MU plugins. Liquid Web has a couple uh, WP or MU plugins. And so we don't really want to remove those. That's fine. They can keep them there. Uh, we don't want to add or remove object cache because maybe we don't want object cache in the, our core repo. Um, so these are things that we would want to exclude. Does, I, I know I kind of went down a tangent a little bit, but that's kind of why I built the Zeek pusher system because we needed to do more than what was available. Um, and, it, and then it still ties in really nicely I really like having a system that is an interface for managing the deploys, like Buddy, because you can start, you can stop, you can see what the status is of deploys and who pushed what code last, if that makes sense. Yes, in the back? Can you, uh, can we pass the ball to her? Hello, okay. Hi. <laughs> Uh, did you consider using uh, automation tools like Ansible, probably Ansistrano, and what would be the benefit of, or the extra things that you might provide with this? For, for Ansible? Ansible and Ansistrano. Oh, Capistrano? Ansistrano. Oh, okay, I'm not familiar with that. Um, Ansible, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I just investigated. It wasn't a good fit for us, but I mean, if it works for you, great. 
it's, it's about having a system where, I mean, the key message here is just have a system that is really simple to use because when it comes time that you broke the site, and I've done it so many times, um, it's really, you want the quickest step to get it back. And it should be simple, and it should be always the same process. So, and if you start having requirements where you can do builds or you want to do more complex things to make your site more efficient or make your lives easier as developers, uh, having a tool to do that is, is really the key. Any other questions? Yeah, in the back there. Yes, great talk, Aaron, by the way. Thank you, Jacob. I have a question. I don't know him, by the way. <laughs> He's not an audience plant. <laughs> I'm just kidding. On the WordPress plugins, to add that you know, as a dependency, how you were talking about in your um, project, you did mention the WordPress package list, and that's kind of how you find or, or get the plugin that you need. Can you quickly show, like, if I want to add like Jetpack to my project, how can I find it in that uh, directory that you showed, and then what would that look like in that composer file? Very good question, Jacob. I will definitely uh, do that. I did not tell him to say that. I did tell him to give me a question if, if he wanted. All right, so W packages. So um, I showed this in the slides, but say I wanted to add a Kismet to my project. Uh, I can just type for the, I, I can search for the plugin. Um, and you can see here's the results. And you can see some of the versions, the latest versions are up here. And so if I click on this, you get this little line of text, which is what you would put into a composer file. And a good compliment to that question is, what is a composer file? So I will look it up, uh, or I will show you guys an example. It's really hard to do. I don't have an uh, exact mirror here. Actually, let's fix that. There we go. Is that still viewable for everybody? OK. So this is the magical composer file. So there's a couple things. Whoop, and whoop. Um, all right, so this is basically the manifest for the project. Um, there's a couple things here uh, that I've built out. Uh, preferred install just means like we want distributions, not the source. Um, the vendor directory, this is really important. This is where all those packages those regular PHP packages will go. So we put them, we, we have a folder with most of our projects that are, that is MU Plugins app. If you don't know what MU Plugins is, definitely look it up. It's, it's, it's a plugin that always runs um, on execution, so you don't have to activate it. So we put vendor files, all the, the packages there, um, and we can even do something special for uh, WordPress plugins, which I haven't done here, um, but it would look like this slash that name. So any any um, packages that are defined as a type of WordPress plugin would go to the slash plugins area, which is what WordPress expects, and that's what we want to do. We don't want to place these in the vendor directory. So um, these are a couple things that that we do, and actually we'll put out an example template of like a composer file, uh, so you have an idea of like what we typically do. And then you define some repositories here. And this is where we get into like, okay, so the bottom one is the W packages. That's where we would look for the Kismet. Uh, we also define our own status um, press and status. That's the top one and second one that I kind of uh, talked about in the, the talk. And then if we wanted to add in um, a Kismet, we grab the string and we can just put it in here. And now when I run composer install or composer update, it'll grab uh, that, that plugin. And we can actually do that. Uh, let's see. I know this side is really small. I'm sorry. All right, so we are going to delete a kismet and then bring it back in with Composer. So this is the directory of plugins. 
Everybody got that? Okay, so I'm, I'm using iTerm and I'm using Z shell. Yeah. With uh, Z shell, yeah, there's a plugin. I use Antigen, A N T I G E N. Google it. They got a whole bunch of stuff. That auto completion you saw was uh, fish like auto completion. A fish is a shell. I know I'm getting really technical. Really cool though. I love tools that really make my job easier. Uh, the J that I typed is auto jump. So you can just, any directory you go to frequently, you can just type part of it or misspell it and it gets you where, where you go. Um, I think my Wi Fi is a little bit slow. Uh, typically it doesn't take this long, but it, it, it is going and it's going to figure out like what it is already installed and then it's going to install Kismet. While that goes, yeah, there we go. So we're installing all our, our uh, packages. I think I had some things in there that required a lot of other packages. Yeah. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? Yes? And we only have a few minutes left. Can you get the beach ball to him? I think you can throw it. Can you throw it? You broke the mic. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so when the deploy day comes, so let's say you develop some feature for a couple, uh, couple of weeks, and on the deploy day, how do you specify what to deploy? Is that a commit hash code or? Yep, 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 yep. So or it's uh, the latest uh, on your master branch? How, uh, how do you specify it? Yeah, so it's on our master branch, number one. It's the latest commit, uh, number two. Um, so if we do here, uh, da, da, da. All right, so, um, well, first of all, if it's a serious project and there's, it's already in production and whatnot, um, we'll typically do a code review on GitHub. Um, and then once that's passed and we've done testing and staging and whatnot, then we move over to uh, Buddy. And this one is set to auto trigger. So anytime a push happens to master branch, it automatically starts to deploy. Um, but when you're more on a, this is more of a demo site, so that's what we want. Every time I push the master, I want it to do its thing. I want the latest code out there. But when you are not doing that, when you're on a production site, so you saw I just hit run, and then this is where you can both roll back and you can just deploy the latest commit. So I can change the commit and I can go through any commit in this uh, code base and I can select it and then I just hit run now and you can see it's, it's going, and I can click this to see the progress, and I can, sh I can look at each step. You can see it's, it's going through the, the host. So it pulls all the latest changes, builds again, builds it's always up to date. front end. It's and always and up to date with, with your so version control it, system. Like, looks like it's going to take five minutes then, right? What's that? It's, it's going to take five minutes then to deploy everything. Like, how much does it take? Yeah, it can take a, a few minutes. Uh, most of this process is happening in the build part and not in the actual pushing. That's the part we want to minimize the time. But yeah, the, the push, I mean, we're done. That's it. And when you need to revert, you do the same, right? You choose the... Yeah, the revert would be okay. essentially the same. Another commit and you... So do I'm going to run this pipeline, but I'm going to change the commit to this one. And then I'm going to... Now I'm, now I'm reverting back a commit. So when you push the changes, does it go to the document root? You directly push files to document root it, or not? It depends on how your project is set up. Um, for uh, rsync stuff, we just we just rsync to WP content. Uh, but for git push with WP engine, WP engine's git push is at the document root. So that's part of why the script that I built had to move things to WP content and then commit them. Are we out of time? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.